in and go. Hold on, wait. Right. Hold on, hold on. Come on, stream. It keeps saying setting up. Done. I think we're live. Go. All right. Welcome to XJW Talk Therapy and Support. Um, you are here with Dion and Jessica. We're having a discussion tonight. This is our um, people's choice, the people from the group tonight. Understand we do have these discussions on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, this week we didn't do, um, we didn't do yet, we didn't do Monday because we were doing um, Token Talk Tuesday. And if mm -hmm. you guys, if y'all missed that then, oh my goodness, we had a good time with that. But um, yeah, so tonight, um, what, what are we gonna discuss tonight, Jesse? Um, so we're going to discuss how the governing body influences the members' life choices. Um, give me one second to close my door because apparently someone just decided to start vacuuming without warning. <laughs> so yeah, come on in, jump in if y'all want to get in on the discussion. Um, this was a, a, a request this evening. So um, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I think it's namely. I speak to her all the time online. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but yeah, I wanted her to hop in on this discussion, but we do do these discussions. We will have an, another event coming up this month. We'll talk about that before we get off. Yeah, I mean, this is a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. Um, the it, it, It's also a very controversial subject because just how much influence can uh, an organization's heads, you know, miles away really have on, you know, the, um, on its members. And so some people don't really believe that, you know, the governing body can have the type of influence that a lot of people say they do. Um, so this is a, it's a controversial topic, but we really want to talk about some of the, the life choices that are kept from members, um, all because of, you know, the religious beliefs, um, or I don't even know if they believe it, but because of the regulations or guidelines provided by the governing body. Right. And I was wondering when she, you know, um, when she brought this up, namely when she brought it up um, today, I was like, so are you talking about feeling a certain type of way because you felt like, do you feel like your dreams were crushed? Um, you feel like any type of you know, any type of want to ever move fur further in life, they basically detoured you away from. Um, it was just like a bad thing. You don't need to do anything good in this life. I was wondering, is that what she meant? Because I know a lot of people are upset about that. Me for one, um, because I don't, I feel like I didn't move as far in life as I could have. Not that I'm saying it's too late, but I feel like I, if I had got a head start way back when, then I feel like I would have moved farther in life. I think that's a, a very, very fair statement. Um, so let's let's hop right in. Um, I did post the link to the Zoom meeting in the, the video. Um, so if you do, if you eventually want to join in our interview session or join a panel, please let us know. Um, but let, let's discuss some of the areas that people often say that the governing body influences their life. So one of the, the first things we mentioned is higher education. And this is no secret that for quite some time, and I, I haven't been in in about 10 years, but I believe currently still, um, the governing body does not, or, or how do I put this? They do not advocate for higher education. They actually try to dissuade its members from, um, from higher education. So uh, Dion, what do, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, I've always been deterred from um, pursuing any type of college. As a matter of fact, I was told when I did decide to go to school that I was stupid for going to school by my father um, because you're not going to get anywhere in this world. So why, why pursue an education? So, um, and then anytime as I was growing up, education was always put on a back burner. It was never anything that was important at all. It was just, it was nothing. The only thing that was important was the um, organization. Yeah, I completely agree. When I um, first started uh, pursuing higher education and, and, you know, started getting offers from different colleges, 
Um, I felt as though I, were, I was being pulled in two different directions. You know, I was being pursued by all types of places. I was, you know, given offers scholarships. I was um, even offered to attend a couple of Ivy League universities. Um, so it, it, it flew at me and then I had, you know, but all my life, college was not, you know, put in front of me as something that was great. It was something, yeah, you can do this to get a job, but your job is only to support your, uh, preaching work. So, you know, it didn't matter where you went, as long as you were able to get a job and, you know, you don't want to spend your life pursuing this education or pursuing anything higher. It's only what you need to survive it is what is what you're supposed to pursue. Exactly. Nothing else was important. You know, uh, only thing I can think back to um, growing up back then was just like um, nothing to have to do with things that would, have, that would help you out in this life right now as you grow up. You know, if we did get past, you know, say, if, you know, if we didn't make it that far, if um, Armageddon never came, we didn't plan for if Armageddon was gonna happen like in 10 or 20 years, we just planned for Armageddon to just be like right around the corner. So we were only planning up until then and that's it. And that was just it. So just so people don't think this is just what we're saying, um, this is actually the current viewpoint that um, the how Jehovah's Witnesses view mm -hmm. education. So if you have kids, you know that you know that are in the organization, and you know they um, uh, maybe your, your spouse is raising them. Pay attention to some of the the things they really say here. So after saying you know it's vital. It often the viewpoint that they examine secular education carefully. Um, they view spiritual education better or has greater value than secular education. And then they talk about moral and spirit dangers that can be brought, uh, that can be gained from attending higher education. So th these are the views that they, they view, how they view universities or similar centers of higher learning. So any colleges, you know, doesn't matter where they are, Jehovah's Witnesses feel that that environment can pose moral and spiritual dangers. What are some of those dangers? Money brings happiness and security. I wasn't aware that wasn't true. Hmm. Um, a person should seek prestige or status that can resolve in higher education. Each person should set their own standards of right and wrong. Higher education is the best way to improve the world. So let me ask you, do, do any of these things really sound bad? I mean, it sounds like higher education, you know, opens people's minds and allows them to look into what's right and what's wrong, but they're basing on their viewpoints on the Bible, not science, not fair logic, but um, how they interpret this document. And so, when you're raised in this organization, you're not just told that higher education isn't important. You're you're kind of you're told that higher education is bad. It can be dangerous, and um, you know that that's 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 the truth of the matter. And this is on their own website, so they're not hiding it. And that's just evil to me. It's just I mean I look at it as evil. I look at it as like why why wouldn't you want a group of people that you are working with to, you know, spread their seeds of education, you know, people growing in your organization, their lives growing, you know, you nurture seeds that you want to grow. And um, you don't just leave them hanging and just like train them one way, tunnel vision. I mean, that's what I always say. It's, it's a lot of tunnel vision that they wanted you to go through and that's it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that article mentioned was that higher education leads to you seeking prestige or status in you know the field that 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 you're pursuing, and that goes on to their next the next topic is career choices. I mean, the witnesses are very clear in what are considered good career choices, and those career choices you know are are judged by how much time you have left to give to their organization. Not whether you're enjoying your job, whether you feel fulfilled, but is this job going to um, give, going to allow you to expend as much time as possible 
studying or preaching or, or doing whatever it is they require for you um, within the organization. Hi, Chloe, I didn't even see you were out there. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you doing? Good. Hi, Jessica. Hey, can you um, see some of the, why don't you, you know, join in on the, um, the, the topic of conversation here? Um, you, you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? Sure. Cool. Um, so uh, how did being raised in the organization affect your view of the future? Well, from being born into it um, and with having my family fully indoctrinated and in, into it and they were, you know, they weren't, you know, I saw families where their parents took it super, super, super seriously and they were unnaturally strict. And then I also saw ones who were somewhat like my parents, but again, a lot of the majority were ones that were a little bit more lax and a little bit more human, I would say. Um, and then of course, there are those who you kind of look at, oh, well, that's probably not really a good example, AKA those people are probably not even really good association, which also messed with me. But to try to stick to the point of what you're saying, um, education for me with my parents both being teachers was still important so they still push that my primary education was definitely important and, and that I should get you know good grades and do the best that I can do because that was their job so it would be kind of crazy for them to like say don't take school seriously when that is their job but they still did not really push for me to do anything outside of possibly getting an associate's degree. Um, I do know some people who probably never even thought about doing anything outside of college. Um, but my parents still kind of encouraged me to, they always said like, get a skill but it wasn't like go to college and get your degree or definitely don't get multiple degrees. And also I was never allowed to think about going to school outside of the area. So the idea of going away to college, even though in DC, I mean, it's, it's not really like the heat of an Ivy League city or anything, but there's still some pretty damn near good colleges here in DC, but it wasn't, it was also like go to a community college. Don't go mm. to a regular, like, I mean, we have yeah. Howard here. Howard is a big HBCU. Um, so a lot of people travel all over the world just to go to Howard. Howard was 10 minutes away from where I lived. And I was never encouraged to do anything like that, even though both of my parents went to HBCUs. Um, wow. So it was like, they pretty much tried to say, yeah, we're here and we've done pretty decent and well for ourselves with our level of education, but no, you should only focus on being a pioneer, being a Bethelite or, you know, being a special pioneer or, you know, it's just, you know, everything was service, service, service related, but uh -huh. they, they still were not the real crazy ones to say like, oh, don't do anything and Jehovah's just going to provide. They still instilled work ethic in me and I thank them for that, at least uh -huh. that, you know, they weren't ridiculous, but it was still, it was never like go for your dreams or go with what is going to take you too long to achieve because that's going to take you away from Jehovah's service because that is ultimately more important than whatever degree you're ever going to achieve. Yeah. I mean, I, I found that that was the exact same thing. I remember my goal was to go to U of M. That was my school. I was um, maize and blue all the way. And um, I, I remember 
I think I cried or one of my alters cried. I don't remember the details, but um, when I got the full ride scholarship and I realized that I, you know, not, not going was a, I mean, going there would have been a sin and that I would have been putting my spiritual well-being at risk. I, I cried because it was a, a huge blow to my, to my, my person, my identity to not be able to pursue a dream that in my eyes, I had earned with all the work that I'd done. I wish I had a had someone to tell me period about it. Like all of the things that um, even Chloe just brought up and you just brought up, I just totally did. Nobody ever mentioned any of this to me. Like I swear to God, I like I was like dumbfounded to everything. I didn't even understand anything that had to do with college. That's how mine was mine. That's when you say that yours weren't as crazy, Chloe, be happy. Wow. Mine, so crazy. I mean, what did they expect you to do when you were done with high school? I mean, uh, they didn't. My they gave me absolutely no direction. Period. None. Just nothing. Hmm. Wow. I know a lot of people in um, where, where I was, it was um, get a job so that you could be, be a pioneer. So a lot of people did go to the vocational schools, which if you saw was actually mentioned in their article. Um, they really push trade, push, if they want you to have a job, it's, it, it's one that, you know, has those kind of flexible hours or doesn't take a lot of schooling, anything that just, you know, gets you on your feet. Um, a common term used was sustenance and covering. And God, I hate that term. Uh, down to this day, the word sustenance makes me sick because I kept hearing that phrase, sustenance and covering, sustenance and covering. And it was what was told to me all the time because I had super ambition that I guess just wasn't right for a lowly female like me. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they, they really did. They, they did a job. They did a doozy. That's what they call it, a doozy. When I saw, well, some of us. I mean, I'm glad. I, I feel good for the people that did actually go to school and you know do something with their life. What is it that you do now, Chloe? Um. Well, I mean, currently I'm kind of like in between a lot of things, but mm -hmm. I am licensed to be a CNA. Um, Right now, I'm in school for nursing, but um, I was still never really encouraged to stay in school. You know, everything was so focused on morality and um, mm -hmm. just, you know, because school apparently was a bigger devil than <laughs> anything it else it was school, really good. so what made you go back like with all this negativity about school mate what made you go back and go to school for nursing well i recently decided to go back you know this year um at 29 which you know is, is crazy because i feel like if i had even despite me leaving at 18 and just even kind of having that push from my family to just stay in school, you know, regardless of whether they were happy with my personal choices and stuff like that, if they had still kind of, you know, connected with me and, and encouraged me, but at that time I was this fellowship, so they weren't talking to me about anything, but I still stayed in school for a good while, but I didn't finish because other stuff happened and I wasn't really supported um, from them or even other people that I was dealing with at the time. But what pushed me to go back now was just that I'm like, I don't want to just live on minimum wage for the rest of my life. If I want to, you know, have a family with someone else, I want to be able to have the means to help my own children to go to school and not have them be all on their own and you know, not be able to give them any real guidance with that. So it was in order to take care of myself and not really need anyone, but also to set the, my you know, prospective children in a good direction and give them a good example because I'm like, 
it wouldn't make sense for me to come from such a long line of educated individuals like my parents and grandparents are pretty much all well my father's side that's a little different but regardless they were still very hard workers they just lived in a different demographic and didn't have as many opportunities but um still a large portion of my family is very educated they a lot of them all have college degrees masters some of them are doctors so I was just like I can't see myself coming from this lineage of education and then me being this person sitting on minimum wage or just sitting on some certifications when everyone before me still had more than that and then my kids are going to look at me and say why didn't you at least get one <laughs> And I'm like, oh, well, because this religion that I'm in says that I shouldn't pursue higher education. <laughs> so I, I, that's kind of why I just decided I wanted to move forward. And, you know, my sister, who's not a witness herself, she always encouraged me to go get my education despite any life struggle or moment that I was in. She always tried to to say to focus on my education and that life would just fall into place at that and to stop worrying about, you know, this person or family interactions and all of that. Cause she said, regardless, you know, this is one thing she said, regardless of what goes on in life, no one can take your degrees. You may lose jobs, you may get fired from jobs, but the only thing that they cannot take away from you are your degrees. So that's kind of why I decided to move forward with that. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that I noticed was that a lot of the things that we talk about with in reference to the organization, when you put them in the context of a relationship, it, it really, um, it, it, it kind of shows just, you know, how damaging this can be. And one couple of things that I noticed was that, um, force changes to a person's will person has insufficient money to meet normal experience ex expenses and is denied outings and activities due to lack of funds one of the things i remember about pioneering was that i was always barely making ends meet and when you don't have access to a higher education when you're denied that denied the ability to, to you know reach for your goals to to do all of that that is financial abuse and it puts a person in a, in a situation where they're struggling to take care of themselves. And that, and that struggle is because you're spending all this time possibly on another partner, or in this case, on the organization. You're expending your time and energy in this preaching work rather than um, taking care of yourself. You know, and you know, in some cases it's to the point of, of almost detriment or people who are solely relied on the organization, you know, some of those who go to other countries or things like that, your only source of income, your only source of uh, the ability to survive is this organization. And if that's not financial abuse, I, I don't know what is. And if the thing about it is that it can actually follow you outside, even if you do lead the organization, just because you had that mindset the whole time, that's all you've seen growing up, is that basically you're um, taking from yourself, you're making yourself just be without, and you can take that on into your, your life even after the organization, after you left the whole situation, it can still follow you in your life and you can still always feel that you're not worthy in some type of way of having more um, and not feel like you even have the, the wants to get more for yourself. So it definitely can follow. Yeah, I, I agree. It definitely follows because even I looked at I always looked at over the years of people that did have more education and I saw what they had, you know, I didn't look at them as being perfect people because of course I was, you know, heavily influenced to say, oh, these are worldly people, their life is shit basically and they have all these problems and, 
you know, more money, more prop. And it's like, yeah, I get that. That is true. More money, you do have more problems, but that doesn't mean that less money, you have less problems either. You still, you have to function in this world with money. And at least if you take care of some of the work while you're young, you know, you have less problems as you get older and you know, when your patience really starts to wear thin, because for me right now, it's like, I'm trying to complete college now at 29 and I'm not as, I'm not as patient as I used to be back then. I'm not as mentally connected with being studious as I used to be, you know, 10 years ago. So just go ahead I, and get it done though, because you're still young. Like, don't get my age, because I'm like 45 and I'm like, oh my goodness. It's no, just, I, so yeah, I'm gonna get it done. You'll but get it. Yeah. I would also still I would still encourage anyone, I would say if if the religion and the beliefs are so strong, they're not going to leave you your values and everything that you believe in is not going to leave you. And if you are that, if you truly believe in all of it, then you're not really going to leave it regardless of what, you know, your, what you go for, you know, they like to throw out all these things and dramas and other stuff to say, oh, if you pursue this opportunity, it's going to take you away from this, it's going to take you away from that. People are very determined to do what they want to do. I mean, even there, you know, this is not the only religion in the world that has other stipulations. There are other religions where you know, like, I'll just take, because I always look at the Jewish religion as an example. I mean, they have certain days that they consider to be holy where they, you know, they don't bend on that. So no one is really going to, you know, a lot of jobs, a lot of schools are very understanding of people's religious beliefs and, you know, religious, you know, duties that they have to do. You know, they always said that, you know, jobs will potentially try to avoid you from, you know, they'll tell you, oh, I need you to work this overtime and make you miss your meetings. I've never encountered that. I've never encountered a job that says, if you don't do this, you know, because of whatever reason that we're going to fire you. <laughs> and that's- I actually that found it different. Like- when I got a career and got a job, if I were to be a witness now, which hell no, excuse me for people who are physically and mentally in, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be one. But if I were, because I'm more financially secure now, because I have a decent job, I would actually be able to attend meetings and do things without the stress. Exactly. And, and it, it, it astounds me that they don't, that, that that logic doesn't flow through the organization. But again, it goes back to their ultimate goal, which is control, not necessarily the happiness of its constituents. Yeah. God and forbid they want you to get some type of happiness out of the situation. If you actually accidentally get happiness, you might be in the back room for real. <laughs> That's real talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's go on to some of the more interesting future choices that I noticed. Um, when I, I was doing some research and um, about the organization and it's um, interesting regulation. So let me see if I can share this again. Um, so one thing I saw was family planning. I don't know if it was just my congregation growing up or if you all noticed it too, that the younger people were encouraged to not have children once they got married because one, the end was coming and you don't wanna be stuck in Armageddon with a toddler. And two, that time and energy spent with family, family planning, family duties could be better used in God's service. Um, I had always wanted to be a mother and it, that was one of the bigger struggles that I had when I was in was knowing that I should not want children or should not have children if I were to get married. And I don't know if that was just my congregation that was like that or did, you, did others um, no, everybody hated kids. Every religion hates kids for some reason. I noticed that. Everyone does to me. 
So yeah, it was definitely encouraged not to have kids. You're gonna be running with your kids at Armageddon and don't get no kids. That's what it was. Yeah. I don't think my the congregations that I were in necessarily promoted not having kids, but there was definitely pushing the alternative for other spiritual goals and options that did not leave room for kids. So if you're telling people to achieve going to Bethel, well, there are no kids at Bethel. And even if you get married and you have kids, well, you're pretty much going to get kicked out of Bethel because there's not really room for kids there. I know a couple um, that happened too. I felt really yeah. bad for them. Yeah, I mean, they they wanted to put, like, I saw one broadcast some months ago that said there was this couple that ended up having some kids while they were at Bethel, and apparently they were able to stay for a time period, but then they kept having kids and kept having kids, so of course they weren't staying at Bethel with their, like, eight or nine kids, but, um, like, that, I felt like that was some weird, <laughs> you know, mind... <laughs> Sound like they was trying to escape. That's it, what it, it, was a, it was a mind switching idea to say that, oh yeah, it's okay to have kids. But again, look at you know all of the struggles that you may have with them. Um, so my congregations didn't necessarily push the idea of not having kids, but they pushed for going to Bethel, you know, being uh, a missionary. Um, you know, when they started the SKE thing, um, which again, was kind of more geared for either single people or couples. Everything is, or circuit work, um, all these things are, you know, these spiritual goals that you should achieve for that do not include kids. So it's like, if you're seeking treasures in God's kingdom, you know, using that type of verbiage, kids right. are not really allowed in these goals. And if you're really going to put work into it, because they'd say, oh, well, maybe you do it for, you know, five or 10 years and see how you feel. And if you choose to get out, then maybe you would have kids. But, you know, I, I, I know people my age who got married and had kids. And then I also know people who were my age who got married and chose not to have kids and they had no plans of ever having any because they're just like oh we'll just have them in the new system when things are perfect mm -hmm. and you know the world is better so that you know our kids are not influenced in all these other things but I mean having kids is a personal decision um and I think in different cultures that idea is different because in different parts of the world it's more encouraged that you do have kids but I guess in the U.S. it's more like well it's a personal choice but again if you're wanting to do all these other spiritual goals and serve where the need is greater then you're not really going to be able to do that to the fullest with the idea of having children. So this begs my next question is what happens to couples and maybe you can answer this um Chloe, what happens to couples who have served where the need is great and they did it to when they were older? I mean, how do they support themselves when they when they don't have children? I guess is the question. You know, if you spent your life in the preaching work, when you get to retirement age, I mean, what happens? Um, I mean, I don't know anyone really personally outside. Well, I do know a couple because um, they were like my spiritual aunt and uncle. They lived in Bethel for like 30 plus years. So every year we would go up to Bethel and visit them. And they were really cool people. I really, you know, liked being around them. But I always felt like it would have been so cool if they did have kids. And, you know, I still could have had this relationship with them. And we could have, again, all still been witnesses and doing whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's nothing wrong with having people that you enjoy who share a like-minded faith, like that pro possibly will make your connection stronger. But um, I know for right now, they got displaced, you know, after Brooklyn got, you know, pretty much sold off 
and there was this mass move over to Warwick. So I would say probably about 60 to 70 percent of those people and a lot of the people that they chose to basically, <laughs> I would like to say furlough, are people that furlough. Are, <laughs> I, I use I use that term as, as they're 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 pretty much furloughed or they got reassigned. Um, but yeah, they lived out their whole life in this world or even other people that never went to Bethel with that. They don't have any kids. And um when they're kind of displaced with even, you know, when they get older and they don't have their whole routine, they kind of actually have to sit in their marriage. And it's potentially something that they're not used to. Um, I saw the same thing with people that did have kids. And once their kids got older and they kind of have to sit with their, their marriage, you know, just alone. And a lot of those marriages failed. I mean, I, I, I can imagine. I, I know a couple that when they came back from Bethel, they divorced. Um, he got disfellowshipped and then got came back in, got reinstated and remarried. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it yeah. doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, you know, I feel like you don't have to have kids to have a good marriage. You don't have to have kids to, you know, survive in this, but, you know, kids do help. Um, and especially if you're, if no one else in your family is a witness and you're kind of like the only ones, you're not really going to have that much support because, I mean, you're kind of left to the, you know, the mercy of the congregation that you're in, but they have their own lives to worry about and take care of. Like, they always say mm -hmm. that, you know, the congregations will help and provide, but even if that is the case, you potentially become a burden to these other people that may have worked their whole lives to take care of themselves and their own families. And now they feel obligated to take care of you because no one else is able to do it. But well, they should yeah. be, they yeah. should do it anyway, since they didn't tell you to shun out of your family and friends anyway. So they should definitely be doing it. Well, I mean, in the case of my biological parent, my incubator, um, she shunned all of her family. Um, I think she has a sister that's still in, um, an aunt that doesn't speak to the rest of us. But um, yeah, they're, they're, and then coming back and now years later, after some of the horrible things that were done, looking to my older, oldest sister, who's the most forgiving to, to help her with everything. And it's, it's, it's a really strange thought process, a really strange thinking process to believe that, you know, the congregation says to shun your family, but then he who does not provide for his own family is worse than a man without faith. So it's let us shun you until we can, until we need you to come take care of your family member now that, that we've had all these years. That's the same thing um, that I feel like they do when it comes down to bark, like if they, if it's someone that's in need in the congregation. Uh, um, as far as finances, the people that they, the very people that they told you to shun and to stay away from, they'll tell you to go and ask them for help. To me, it's really horrible to control someone's, and, and, and I guess that question comes up. Are they controlling people's futures or are they not? Are these people just making those choices themselves? Because if you ask in a court of law, that, you know, these people, you know, they, they caused me to lose out on all these opportunities, future wealth, career opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. They will laugh you out the courtroom and say, you made those decisions yourself because you, you were an adult when you did this. Yet, if you're born in, did you really make that decision yourself? Exactly. And it, it's a, it, it, it's a very touchy subject. I mean, what do you guys think? I think that personally, it's, if you weren't, already in if you were already born in that is totally not a choice of your own because there's no way that i would choose to and with my own mind that i have there's no way on this earth that i would choose to live the way that i grew up no way and i would have definitely furthered myself totally there's no way i would just sit in this world because this world 
isn't set up for us to just exist. It's, mm -hmm. We got to make movement in this world. We must create in this world. And they didn't set us up to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree as well. Um, if you're not born in, or at least maybe you came in as a, you know, middle to late teenager, you know, or you had one parent in and one parent who was out, then you may have had it slightly differently. But regardless, if, if you were born into it, I don't think it's completely your choice. Because again, everything that they tell you is not, this is good for you. They tell you this is life and death. So right. you understand what life and death is even at a young age, regardless of whether you've seen death at a young age or not, you still understand what it is. So when you're hearing all these things at a young age that, you know, all of these decisions mean your life, then you're, you're kind of in survival mode and you feel like, well, I shouldn't make these decisions because it will lead me this way, it will lead me that way, and it will potentially cause me to die. So you mm -hmm. even look at higher education or any of these other opportunities as, well, th this could take me away from Jehovah and it's going to cause me to die because again, I don't know when Armageddon's happening. So I could be, you know, just away at college, you know, or on the brink of graduating from college, or even if I've succeeded and I've done well, but if I'm not completely focused on what's going on, then I could die. So I think that's the thing that a lot of people who are born in, they look at that as, well, I don't need to do anything that's going to completely take away my focus from the organization because I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. That, did, that's you see my, did you see the video that I did, the, um, the We Are Family video that I did, Chloe? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Every That's the only thing that they preach about is death everything's you're gonna die if you don't do this you're gonna die you know that's all they do is preach death so of course when you're a kid and you're you're born into and you're here and die 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 all the time you're gonna be scared and you're gonna just definitely not be looking for a career you're gonna be looking towards to do the things that you got to do so that you won't die mm -hmm. so yeah. let's let's talk about happier things you know now that we're um we're in a place where you know, we, we know that Armageddon's not right around the corner, right? you know, we're, we're not going to die next week. What have you done or what are you planning to do in your case um, since leaving the organization that, you know, is something they would look down on or, or would preach against? What are some of your guys' plans, I guess, or things you have done that, you know, you would never be able to do as a witness? I, th I think my journey right here, um, as far as like waking people up, um, that's like my ultimate right now. This is what I feel like I my, what I would be definitely looked down on if I were to do this, but to open people's eyes and let them know that there's other ways that you can go around. Um, you can live life within this system, within this world that we actually live in. I feel like that's this is what is going to be my gift to, um, you know, something that I can grow from, I can spiritually heal from. And um, it, it'll help other people out. So that's for right now in this journey. What about you, um, Chloe? What are some things you, you know, your future that, you know, you're looking forward to that would not be allowed as a witness? Well, for me, I've kind of gone in my own spiritual path and kind of discovered what real spirituality is and what that looks like to them is a bunch of demons <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it is strictly just because again they're just going off of what people tell them they have never investigated and i mean a lot of christian people would 
potentially say the same thing. But again, it, it's wrapped in the idea that you've never explored it. You've just always listened to what you were told and never truly chose to, you know, research and explore things for yourself. So, you know, for what I promote right now and, you know, the gifts that I have that I try to, you know, help other people with, all of that would be looked at as some demonic or satanic influence. So I would probably be the furthest thing from <laughs> being, you know, ex you know, like there, there are some people who they would say, well, those people are bad, but you know, they're probably just caught up in a morality issue. But for me, they'd be like, oh, you're too far gone. You're, you're caught up with demons and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I don't feel that way at all. <laughs> you know, whatever you're trying to say that is so, you know, corrupt and evil that has to do with it. I understand there are some, you know, there are things you need to be careful about when you're doing that. But however, within me, I feel better. I feel more connected to even, you know, for those that do believe in a higher power, I feel more connected to it now than I've ever felt within the religion because the only, you know, they, they press spirituality and thinking about spiritual things, but I'm like, it never made sense to me. I'm like, I just felt like this was another level of school that was like Bible school for Jehovah's Witnesses. And it did not include any other external information or any other research. It's like, we've done the research for you. So just trust that and just listen. But I'm like, no, I wanna do my own research. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I still want to explore and do my own research. But being born in, you never have that opportunity. If you mm -hmm. choose to come in, you potentially can be exposed and, and learn and pick up these things for yourself and decipher what you wanna do. But being born in, you never have that opportunity to research anything else outside of, you know, what, you know, is, what their information is. I mean, they even tell children now to come bring in, you know, if, if there is a topic of, uh, you know, this, this is the thing that I never understood. They always tried to say the science class was so bad because they're going to teach you about evolution and that you need to refute that and stand up in front of class and pretty much make a whole presentation in front of whatever science class you are to make that a witness to say that you know evolution is false and that you know creation is real and you know basically just do that whole spiel with that and I'm like most of my science classes never even focus that hard on evolution did they we teach were cutting it? Up frogs back then. that's what we were doing we were cutting up frogs but what what did um and so what about you um Jesse can you answer your own question oh I didn't think about that um <laughs> oh, yeah um well for me I guess I always wanted to be a mom and to be a I, I love working I love my career and I always wanted a career so um that was something that I was not allowed in the organization and now that I've been gone and um pursued you know the path that I wanted I I I, I find that I am actually happy with the choices I made in my life. You know, I have a great job. I have, you know, wonderful children, a great partner. So, I mean, these are things that I would not have been allowed in the organization, especially being a woman working and quote unquote being, the, according to the IRS, you know, I'm head of household <laughs> and that's definitely not allowed. <laughs> so um, it's, you know, it's, it's a very different life than I expected or, a late oh, a female can have in the organization. Well, I'm glad that you were able to make some different decisions for your life, Jesse. And the fact that you can even say that you're happy is that's a wonderful thing. I put up my congratulations to that because I think that's always a congratulations. Coming up out of that situation and still being happy, that's great. Yeah, I mean. 
I think, you know, one thing I think we should discuss maybe on another call, um, maybe next week. Um, Chloe, you mentioned them, them pushing children to preach. And one thing I read, I can't remember where I saw this article or something, I'll have to look it up for next week, was that one of the main effects of them constantly pushing that witnessing is not to bring in other members, but to reinforce what the, what the, the actual believer has in their mind. I mean, this kind of, you get rejected by other people, you're repeating things over and over again to other people, and it's a, it, it assists in quote unquote brainwashing, I guess, if that's the, you know, that, that that's one of the way to put, one way to put it. Um, the witnessing is to reinforce your own beliefs, not to convert others. And I think that's something that deems, you know, discussion maybe on one of our calls. I think so. Yeah. Too. I, I definitely agree with, with a lot of that. Um, we're coming up on the hour. I, I can't believe we're actually on any type of schedule. Holy moly, are we? I know, right? We, we, did, we did stay on the schedule tonight. Yeah. Well, we got to talk about um, the group itself, um, upcoming events. Um, thanks, Chloe, for joining us tonight. I know you were up there last night with us, too. Definitely appreciate your um, interaction with the group. We definitely appreciate that. Um, and as far as the group, anyone that does, we, we always do replay. So this will come back up probably in about another three or four hours. I'll have this replay. Um, disclaimer, we do stream this onto YouTube. Um, if you ever come into any discussions and you want your camera, um, you don't want to be up there, then make sure you keep your camera down. Um, Jesse can actually change your um, name if you ever want your name changed up there for future references to let you know. And um, we have we have another event coming up on the 14th of um, November. It's going to be the um, spoken word and like poetry, so you can bring your have, if you want to do poetry, spoken word, just please come with it. You know, anybody that's interested, you can definitely um, let us know that you're going to show up for that event. We will be posting that in events as well. Um, we did introduce the Inth Institute on the first of the month. So um, is there anything new that you want to tell um, everybody about the Inth Institute, Jesse? <laughs> Uh, just that we are making excellent progress. Um, got a call from someone today that um, I have been looking forward to speaking with. It was very positive. Um, and I mean, that that's pretty much where we're at <laughs> since the last time I mentioned it. Um, again, uh, we are always, you know, looking for stories to share. Um, we're coming up a new, I will be posting the first uh, issue of the news article on the 15th. Um, and, you know, again, there's services there, there's mentorship programs that we are, that we are offering there within the group, you can sign up to be a mentor or mentee. Um, if you uh, know someone who is in need of more crisis intervention services, please contact us. We are in contact with a, a verified nonprofit that can offer resources such as Safe Haven um, resources if, if you need to get out or uh, anything like that. So please don't forget that we are there for you. Um, it's another as, discussion too. I'm sorry, Jesse, to cut you off. That was another um, discussion idea that someone was having um, since asking about. So maybe the next time we'll, um, we can have that as a discussion too, because someone was asking about a safe place. They wanted to have a discussion about like where are um, like XJW witnesses, the wives or whatever that are trying to get away. Um, you know, if they had have had the, this type of situation where they had support, you know, what are the different resources that we can offer? So I feel like, I know you so you went in on that, but someone was like, um, they wanted to have a discussion about that. So maybe we can put that in. And, you know, as especially as you get more, we get more resources within the, um, the Institute. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, one of the things we are pursuing heavily are legal resources. And, you know, that's something that we, that is very positive and on the upswing. Um, so one, one thing that is important is that we do show that there is a need, um, you know, when speaking with one of my, one of the, um, uh, another nonprofit owner, um, you, you need to show that, that, that community does need these resources and that's, what's going to bring in sponsors. And that's, what's going to bring in, 
uh, more volunteers. So, you know, don't be, don't be hesitant to contact us. Don't be hesitant to, you know, use the contact page on our website or send an email or even, you know, reaching out to the admins of the X, XJW therapy and support group because showing a need is what's going to get uh, the help we need for this community. So, so exactly, just like Jesse just said, please do not be afraid to ask for the help, to reach out for the um, resources. We are letting you know that the resources are here. Um, please, if you have any friends that are interested in, um, just invite them to the group. Um, they can connect. Like I said, the group is here and the in Institute is just like another resource within the group that you can get other resources as far as help and, you know, to whatever needs that you may need and that we can help out with. Trying to think, was there anything else that we needed to talk about? Nope, I think we're at we're good. We're it's uh 58 uh, two minutes to the top of the hour. Um, as you said, we're going to be posting this again for uh viewing in the group, and uh, we will talk with you guys soon. All right, Chloe, we're out.